I never imagined that something as ordinary as driving home late at night could become such a terrifying affair. It was a night without a moon, the kind that engulfs everything in darkness, and I found myself on a deserted stretch of road that appeared to run on forever in front of me. I had been driving for quite some time. My vehicle's headlights were the only thing that broke the darkness as they sliced across the abyss. As I tightened my hold on the steering wheel, my heart began to race, and an uneasiness that I could not explain came over me. I had the impression that I was being watched, as if eyes were looking at me from places where they couldn't be seen, such as the shadows. I attempted to brush it off as nothing more than my overactive imagination, but the sensation continued and grew stronger with each mile that went by. The path I was taking wound around and around, taking me deeper and deeper into the chasm. The trees that surrounded the area appeared to be menacing sentinels, with their branches moving in a menacing manner as the wind blew. My spine tingled with anticipation at the thought of what each gust of wind might be concealing. My attention was drawn to something moving in the reflection of the rearview mirror. I turned to look again, but there was nothing behind me. Just the darkened length of road stretching out behind me with no cars or people on it. I forced myself to shake off the anxiety, attributing it to exhaustion as much as my vivid imagination. However, after that, odd occurrences started taking place. The radio in the automobile began to make a crackling sound as it turned on, producing distorted whispers and creepy static. The volume grew by itself, making it impossible to understand the sounds that were being played as if they were making fun of me. I quickly reached for the volume knob, hoping to put an end to the eerie sounds, but it felt as if an unseen force was preventing my hand from reaching for it. I put my foot down hard on the brake pedal with the intention of coming to a stop and looking into the situation, but the automobile refused to respond. It did not stop hurtling ahead at all, and I had no control over its acceleration. As I struggled against the vehicle's unrelenting propulsion, panic began to course through my veins. A person's form suddenly formed in the distance, and it was seen standing in the middle of the road. When I focused on trying to make out its features, my heart became stuck in my throat. It was a shady figure, tall and ominous. Its shape was warped and weird, and it was lurking in the shadows. As I got closer, it looked like it was getting bigger, and its presence gave off a sinister vibe. I attempted to avoid a collision by doing a sharp turn, but the steering wheel would not budge and was fixed in its position. The figure grew larger until, just in the nick of time before the collision, it vanished into thin air. The car's piercing engine roar drowned out my screams as it careened off the road and crashed into a ditch. I was dazed and confused as I climbed out of the wreckage, and my body was shaking as I did so. I searched the bleak environment thoroughly, but I couldn't find any trace of the figure. The night continued to be silent and absolutely lifeless. I was disoriented as I wandered up the road, looking for a sign of civilization or assistance of any kind. My body began to ache with tiredness as the hours ticked by. The night dragged on, unyielding in its gloominess as it progressed. I noticed a faraway spark of light just as my hope was beginning to dwindle away. As I lurched toward it while praying for deliverance, I immediately felt a wave of relief wash over me. As I got closer, the light cast a shadow over an abandoned roadside diner, revealing a neon sign that was buzzing with a ghostly glow. As I went inside, the door squeaked open, and the odor of stale air blended with the feeling of impending doom that stuck to my skin. I was terrified. The customers turned their heads to stare at me, the hollow expressions in their eyes conveying an unsaid terror. There was a palpable sense of dread in the air, as if the cafe itself was hiding secrets that were more sinister than the night sky. When I got close to the counter, I was frantic for answers, but the server's voice came out as a spooky whisper. Welcome to the midnight diner, where dreams are made real and the lost find their way, the sign outside the restaurant read. As soon as I became aware of the true nature of my surroundings, a chill rushed through my body. I had inadvertently found myself in a world where the lines between reality and the macabre were blurred, where night reigned supreme, and where innocent souls were sucked into their own personal hells. I had no idea what I was getting myself into. I immediately turned to rush out of the diner, fumbling for my keys. 
Attempting to leave in an inconspicuous hurry, I dropped my keys at the door. As I bent over to pick them up from the ground, pressing the door open to rush out to my car, a chill ran up and down my spine, causing the hairs on my arms to raise. The absolutely worst feeling of desperation to leave this horror cafe surging through my veins. At that moment, I felt the need to look behind me, as if danger were at my heels. Sweat was dripping down my face, and my heartbeat was thumping as if I had just completed a sprint. Upon grabbing my keys while rushing out the door, I turned to look briefly behind me with the fear of an uncertain death near. With both horror and an unexpected thrill, I noticed the cafe was empty. No customers, no staff, no one in sight. I wasted no time, immediately sprinting to my car. Upon getting into my car and speeding off as quickly as I could muster, I realized how I had either momentarily lost my mind, or indeed just encountered something, someone unexplainable. Perhaps the shadows beyond our human understanding. To this day, this stands as the most horrifying nighttime drive I've experienced. I've never been back down that road again. As I started out on my adventure, which involved a lengthy drive across the empty countryside, the moon was hanging low in the sky. The road stretched out in front of me, leading deeper and deeper into the night, and the only thing that kept me company was the eerie silence that pervaded the atmosphere. An uneasy sensation began to take hold of me as the night wore on and I continued to drive. The way the shadows moved as they traveled along the sides of the road tricked my tired eyes. The driver's headlights had a habit of flickering on and off, which allowed him to catch fleeting glimpses of gnarled trees whose twisted branches extended like skeleton fingers. It was as if the world itself was holding its breath in anticipation of some ominous event that was about to take place. My stomach began to churn with unease as I traveled further down a road that I had never traveled before. Even though I had traveled this path dozens of times in the past, it looked more like a maze than a direct path to my destination tonight. I gave the GPS a quick peek in the hopes of finding some reassurance, but all that appeared on the screen was nothing but white space. Fear spoke softly into my ear, casting doubt on whether or not I had made the right choice by venturing into this darkness. I was startled when the car's engine began to splutter and my heart skipped a beat. I sucked in my breath and prayed that it was nothing more than a temporary hiccup. But as soon as the automobile came to a full stop, I realized that I was doomed to remain in this nightmare. My hands were shaking as I reached for my phone, and all I could think about was getting a signal so I could call for help. But even as I held it up, the screen stayed motionless, laughing at the hopelessness of the situation. I felt a wave of panic wash over me, and at the same time, a chilling sense of isolation began to constrict around my throat. After being presented with no other options, I got out of the car, and the sound of my footfall reverberated through the silence. The darkness that permeated every square inch of my field of vision made me feel as though the night were engulfing me. I looked around me, hoping to find any indication that someone was still alive, but all I could see was a spooky lack of activity. A lone howl in the distance broke the silence, sending a chill down my spine. It was a scream from another universe that brought my most basic concerns back to the surface. The sound didn't belong in this reality. It appeared as though the shadows were contorting and twisting themselves into ominous things that were moving at the periphery of my vision. I was walking along a road that was completely empty when I noticed a light that was flickering. A rundown wayside motel emerged from the shadows, and its neon sign barely illuminated the worn out letters that spelled out vacancy. My desperation pushed me into the dimly lit door of the building, where I hoped to find a safe haven and some answers. Inside, a musty odor permeated the air and clung to the worn out carpet, making it difficult to breathe. As the receptionist silently passed me a rusted key without saying a word, her eyes were lifeless and expressionless like a corpse's. The flickering fluorescent lights produced an unsettling glow on the peeling wallpaper, giving the impression that the motel itself was concealing something that it was unwilling to share. In the room, I made an effort to slow down the rapid beating of my heart, but the squeaking floorboards and muffled conversations coming from beyond the door disrupted any attempt at finding tranquility. 
The fading light bulb caused shadows to move and dance along the walls of the room, their twisted shapes contorting with each flicker. Fear became a constant friend of mine, waiting around every corner, and I soon understood that I was not the only one experiencing this. As the passage became even more congested, the whispers became increasingly audible, and a brisk wind crept through the cracks, bringing with it an increasing feeling of doom. When I gazed through the window, I was hoping to catch a glimpse of salvation, but all I saw was a vast expanse of blackness instead. The hours went by, but each one seemed like an age in comparison. The night, which only got nastier as it went on, mercilessly mocked my frailty. I was aware that I needed to go away, to get away from this place that had me trapped in its web of terror. I was shaking so badly that my hands shook as I gathered my things and made my way to the door. A bone-chilling gust of wind destroyed the last light in the corridor as I entered the hallway. Instantaneously, there was total darkness all around me. There were whispers all around me, and as they pleaded with me to stay and become a part of the never-ending night, the voices of those around me grew louder. I was simply acting on instinct, but I was moving forward because of a strong desire to be free. The brisk night air greeted me as soon as I rushed through the motel's entrance. I raced as fast as I could, my heart thumping so hard in my chest that I dared not glance back. The road stretched out in front of me, presenting me with a possible escape route from the atrocities I had witnessed. As I pulled away from the seedy motel and all of its nefarious goings-on, I couldn't help but feel a wave of relief rush over me. But I was well aware that the gloom that I had descended into would always be present in my dreams. It would serve as a continual reminder of the night that I had walked into the abyss. I never in a million years would have guessed that a normal journey in the middle of the night would develop into such a terrifying experience that it would stay with me for the rest of my life. It was a moonless night, and I found myself on a deserted road that seemed to continue on into the darkness for an indefinite amount of time. I had no idea that this drive would turn into a terrifying experience that was beyond anything I could have dreamed about. As I walked further into the night, a feeling of dread began to develop in the lower right quadrant of my stomach. The usual sights and noises of civilization vanished, leaving me alone in the unsettling calm that ensued. My car's headlights were the only thing that provided any illumination, and they made the road in front of me look like a slender passageway through the unknown. A thick fog descended across the area, casting a spectral mist over everything in sight. As we traveled farther and farther away from the city, the visibility became increasingly poor, and I had to squint my eyes in order to make out any recognizable landmarks or indications of life. It became challenging for me to breathe because it felt like the weight of the oppressive atmosphere was crushing my body. After that, I became aware of a light in the distance that was flickering. My heart leapt with joy as I contemplated the possibility that I had stumbled onto a sign of civilization or a safe haven. I recommitted myself to my mission and followed the light, which led me deeper and deeper into the maze of shadows with each passing second. As I got closer, the light turned out to be an old, run-down motel with a neon sign that was just about holding on for dear life. As I pulled into the parking spot and got out of my car, I felt an overwhelming sense of relief since I was finally able to get out of the confining environment of my vehicle. It was eerie to look at the exterior of the motel because the paint was chipping and the windows were shattered, giving it an air of abandonment and deterioration. I approached the front desk with trepidation, the sound of my shoes reverberating through the empty lobby. The elderly gentleman who worked as the receptionist greeted me with a toothless smile that sent shivers down my spine. He appeared to be in poor health. In the midst of the night, I was yearning to find a place where I could feel safe but I rejected my instincts and stayed where I was since his presence made me feel uneasy. He murmured something to me under his breath as he handed me the key to a room on the second floor of the hotel, and I couldn't quite make out what he said. An overpowering feeling of dread came over me as I climbed the creaky staircase to get to the next floor. The atmosphere became thick and oppressive, making it difficult for me to take a breath. It was as if the walls themselves were closing in on me. When I unlocked the door to my room, 
The first thing I noticed was a musty odor, and the fluorescent light was flickering. The lighting in the room was very low, so the shadows were long and seemed to be dancing in an ominous manner on the walls. I was feeling uneasy, so I closed the door behind me in the hopes of finding some comfort in the silence. On the other hand, as the night progressed, odd incidents started to take place. There was an evil aura surrounding the whispers that reverberated through the walls, even though they were barely audible. The flickering light in the ceiling took on a life of its own, generating uncanny shadows that bent and twisted themselves as if they were making fun of me. I glimpsed fleeting glimpses of figures, their shapes warped and twisted as they passed in front of the corner of my eye. They appeared to materialize and disappear in the blink of an eye, leaving me to question whether or not I was actually sane. The space quickly became a terrifying maze, and I found myself longing for the freedom that comes with daylight. The more time passed during the night, the more supernatural occurrences there were. Things began to move on their own accord, and fell to the ground with a thunderous thud as they did so. The incomprehensible phrases were said in a threatening tone that filled the room and became louder as they were directed at me. I ran to the door in a last-ditch effort to flee, but when I got there, I saw that it was locked from the outside. As soon as I realized that I was helpless in this nightmare universe and at the whim of forces that were beyond my comprehension, I was overcome with panic. As the night continued on without stopping, Every passing minute seemed like it lasted for a lifetime. When the first rays of light came through the horizon, the ghosts stopped appearing. The room had returned to its previous state of disrepair, and there was no trace of the mysterious presence that had been bothering me throughout the previous night. I stumbled out of the motel exhausted and terrified, and I vowed that from that point on, I would never again go out into the unknown depths of the night. The events of that tragic drive are still a problem in my dreams. The deserted road and the eerie motel serve as a disturbing reminder that the darkness conceals mysteries that are beyond comprehension, and that some pathways are better off left undiscovered than others.